Hello chess friends. In this video today, I'd like to share with you a really beautiful game that I was reminded of during one of my coaching sessions today. And this game was played back in 2011 in the Chinese Championship. Uh, and it was played between uh, Zhao Jun as white against Zhu Dexun as black. And one thing I've noticed uh, at the time that I first saw this game is that Zhao Jun is a very attacking and aggressive grandmaster uh, in his chess games and in fact I believe he has a nickname of the Chinese Tal if I'm not mistaken. So let's enjoy this really beautiful win by Zhao Jun. It went as follows d4, knight to f6, c4, e6, knight c3, Bishop b4, uh, Nimzo Indian defense, a3. Uh, this is the same ish variation. Nowadays, you more often see people play moves such as e3 or queen c2 uh, at a higher level. Uh, the idea of queen c2 being to not allow the white pawns to get doubled uh, on the c file uh, as it happened in the game. So a3, Bishop takes c3, b takes c3 c5 just fixing those pawns in place as potential targets uh, white plate e3 b6 bishop to d3 knight to c6 so black setup is basically centered around eventually attacking and winning the pawn on c4 which is white's main weakness whereas white's main plan is to play e4 and to start to push his f pawn and other pawns forward for an eventual attack on the king side. Uh, we'll see that uh, come into play quite well in this game. Now in this position black played bishop a6 which transpires to be a not very good move. Uh, basically black's move order can be improved a bit by castling and after e4 uh, if you play the Nimzo Indian as black I suggest you pause the video and try to find the best move for black yourself. So in this position it's important to understand that white is threatening uh, bishop g5, uh, setting up an unpleasant pin on the black knight. We'll see the problems that can uh, cause for black in the game. So the way to avoid that is to play this prophylactic move of knight to e8, not allowing bishop to g5. And there's one other really great point about this move, knight to e8. After castles, bishop a6. Black now has a really good reply available uh, after f4. Again, can you see the move that black should play here? Well done if you found the move f5 in this position. In this way, we stop white playing f5 and getting more space for his attack. And we sort of noticed that <coughs> because the position in the center is quite closed. It's rather difficult for white to make use of his bishop pair advantage. And if white does nothing, black might just take this pawn on c4 with this piece and, and have a much better position. All in all, I'd say the chances are probably about equal, but it does somehow feel easier to play black if I had to pick a side. So black played bishop to a6 in the game. And the problem with this is that it allows white to achieve the idea I mentioned. So who can remember the move that white should play in this position? Well done. Bishop to g5 is really strong. Uh, the problem with this pin is that, well, basically black can't really move his queen all that easily. For example, queen c7 may allow the, uh, the doubling of the pawns on the king side, which could prove a bit of a problem. Uh, for example, a knight can come in and the queen can also come into the attack quite easily from this position. So black tried to break the pin, playing h6, bishop to h4, just keeping the pin. And now black decided he didn't want to tolerate this pin any longer, so he played g5. And after bishop g3, I think you can understand the, the disadvantage of g5. That basically black has pushed the pawns in front of his king, and created some quite serious weaknesses for white to uh, exploit. So white played f4. And probably the best chance for black is to play a move such as knight to h5. 
to try to sort of bring some pieces to the defense of the king's side uh, as such. Instead, black got a bit too greedy and a bit too ambitious. He played the move knight to a5, uh, maybe focusing on the c4 pawn at the expense of his king's safety. So white played f takes g5, uh, white castled here. And now after knight h5 is the really uh, beautiful part of the game, in my opinion. Where white found some really, <clears throat> excuse me, white found some really incredible moves here. And I think that it would be very uh, instructive for you to try to guess each of white's moves from this point in the game. And see if you can find what uh, Zhao Jun played. So the first move that he played here was uh, bishop takes d6. A really fantastic move in this position. Uh, yes, we are sacrificing a piece. On the other hand, we get an e5 with a tempo. And we'll see that white gets the uh, necessary initiative to make the attack work. But after queen e7, it sort of makes sense that after we give up a piece, we kind of have to follow up very aggressively. So to move knight g3 makes sense. And black played the move knight takes g3 in the game. Now, you might be wondering, what if black doesn't trade? What if they play, for example, knight g7 and try to keep the pieces on the board? In that case, I think that a move such as knight e4 would be very strong. Uh, maybe knight h5 with the same idea could also possibly work. My um, idea of knight e4 is just to get that knight to the monster outpost on f6, uh, which was possible because of our bishop d6 sacrifice before. And while I'm not using an engine to annotate the game, the feeling I get from uh, a human perspective is that this sort of position is not really tenable for black. I can see that we can go queen g5 and bring our queen into the attack or also move the knight at a good moment. And ultimately I just don't see how black will survive uh, with white's pieces nearly all being involved in the attack and black having some very clear weaknesses in his uh, position and not very good piece coordination. Uh, on a general level. So returning to the game, black played knight g3 and and okay in this position I think most people would just take that knight without thinking but if you do play h takes g3 then black can sort of play f5 and suddenly lock up the queen side a bit and sure we can take on passant in this position but black is sort of hanging on for the moment and after all we are a piece down in this case so i want to see if you can find a better move than h takes g3 you know, as emmanuel lasker said when you see a good move in the position look for an even better one so what would you play here as white uh pause the video if you need some time to find uh Zhao Jun's brilliant 19th move so congratulations if you saw <clears throat> the move rook to f6 I mean, it's a really amazing example of domination, I think, where, you know, the rook just cuts off the queen and it cuts off the rook from coming into the defense with f5. In the meantime, we can bring our own queen into the attack and try to sap a lawnmower-style checkmate, uh, for example. So black has to figure out what to do here about queen g4. And to be honest, I don't think he has a really good answer. Um, in the game, he played king g7. Um, if black does play knight to f5, I think just queen to h5, or even queen g4, would just be winning. Uh, one tactic I can't resist showing you guys is if uh, bishop takes c4 and queen g5. If black plays knight g7, then I imagine there are probably lots of good moves for white. Uh, perhaps the first one that comes to mind is bishop to h7. And there's a really nice tactical point that we can play rook to h6 discovering an attack on the queen and okay it's true that in some positions the free pieces would give black a would give white a very good run for his money uh, for the queen the problem for black here is that the pieces just don't coordinate that well and it's quite easy for white to bring more pieces into the attack on the king um even queen h4 actually is quite a, a serious threat for example uh, threatening this rook to h8 checkmate so ultimately, I think black's position is just not really tenable at this moment, and white does seem to just be winning. If we return to the game, black played king to g7, but then white just brought more pieces into the attack, 
Uh, and it's an important point, actually, when assessing a sacrifice, is that you sort of want to be able to bring your pieces, especially the queen, into the attack quickly after you make a sacrifice. If you don't have this momentum and you don't have this initiative, it can be quite hard to sort of justify giving up a whole piece as such. So black played the move rook to g8 to try to make a escape route for the king. Uh, white played h takes g3. And what some players would do after black's knight b7 is I would say, okay, this king is very weak and you know, let's just finish them off with our pieces. But a very important principle when attacking is to try to bring every single piece into the attack. Because if you think about it, we don't want to leave anybody behind. And that one extra piece could make all the difference in uh, overwhelming the opponent's defences. So as you might have guessed, White played Rook AF1, uh, opening up the idea of, of capturing on F7 one day. Uh, Black defended it with Knight to D8. And I really like the move that White played in this position. Uh, he played the move uh, Queen to E4, uh, threatening a few little forks here. Uh, Black played Queen B7 and... Okay, in this position, what would you play here as white? How would you deal with the offer to uh, exchange queens with white to play? So, well done if you found the move d5 in this position. Uh, a move that actually seems very natural to me is the move queen h7. And to be fair, this move might also be quite good, in fact. After king f8, I'm guessing bishop g6 is quite strong. Maybe bishop e4 is even better, actually, to uh, hit the... Uh, hit the rook in this sort of fashion and I think black can't really defend himself because if he tries to defend the rook uh, from capture or at least to be able to take back well as you've probably seen this uh, square on uh, f7 is not so well defended anymore and white will give a checkmate very quickly uh, say king e8 and uh, well, rook e7 if you want to really show off here uh, of course queen takes j8 was also checkmate so White played d5, which to be fair is also winning, I think. And here this is the really nice puzzle I wanted to share with you guys. So after rook to h8, white does have, I believe, a forced checkmate in this position. It's some moves long, but it's always a check, so you can figure it out to the end with a bit of effort. So what is the winning move for white in this position? As usual, pause the video if you uh, don't uh, see it right away. So, well done for those of you who saw the move queen to g6. It's a really beautiful queen sack. Uh, well, when there's a queen sacrifice, not beautiful. Uh, if they play king f8, then we can take on e6. And, I mean, black just has no good way to cover this f7 point. You might notice often a successful attack is based on focusing everything on one or two particular weaknesses and kind of overwhelming the opponent's defense on that square rather than, let's say, trying to be everywhere at once. So going back to the game, black took the queen and allowed white to demonstrate his really beautiful idea. Uh, you might notice there's a little bit of a windmill theme uh, going on in this position, where uh, we have rook g8, rook to g5, king to h6, and after rook g6, black moved the king back uh, in the windmill with king h7. Out of interest, what would you play here if black plays uh, king to h5 in this position? There's probably more than one answer, but I think the easiest is to play rook f4. And I just don't see how black uh, stops rook to h4, mate. For those of you who watched my uh, video on the deadly quiet move, it's sort of another good example of this theme. So black played king h7, uh, rook g4 was played. We'll see why rook goes to g4 in a moment. Uh, king h6, rook f6, king h5, and okay, how does white mate in two in this position? Well done, white has rook to h4, and black resigned in this position because after king g5, he gets mated with rook to g6. So I think you'll agree this was a really beautiful and really exciting game. I know when I first saw it, it made a, a really big impression on me and even now, I think it's a very uh, beautiful sequence and yeah, I'm very happy that I can share this with you guys and you know, show you the beauty of chess. Uh, the chess is not just a purely serious you know, game where you just sit and you know, think for uh, many hours and you know, have a completely uh, poker face as such. 
Head of Chess is also a lot of fun, of course. So, okay, I hope you really enjoyed this video, that you learned something useful. Uh, if you want to keep updated with more content like this, uh, please subscribe to my channel. I would uh, really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So have a great day and I'll see you around. Bye-bye.